Ladies and gentlemen, staining wood floors with a roller. Yes, indeed. And there it is. Morel's Light Fast Stain in New Medium Oak. There's an Amazon affiliate link in the description if you'd like to get this exact colour. Or you can have a different colour if you just click around a little bit. Morel's is only available in the UK, unfortunately. But I have a link for a stain which is... Um, far superior in the United States um, all the stains in the UK suck pretty bad to be honest um, just because the wood flooring industry is so much smaller and we only stain maybe 10 or 20 percent of our floors whereas in the United States it's like 80 percent and there's a, a difference in chemical regulations so different regulations mean different stains unfortunately so In this video, yes, you're going to see me stain a floor using a roller to apply and then a rag to wipe the excess off. But you'll also see me applying the first coat of lacquer. Unfortunately, it gets a bit too dark to film the last coat after the sun went down, but the client was kind enough to send me some shots of the finished product the next day. So if you stick around to the end of the video, you will see the finished product too, which a lot of people say they want in, in my other videos, which I for some reason didn't really do which is a bit silly so I'm also going to voice over this whole video so hopefully there'll be a lot of information that you can take from it um, and I'm trying to make a lot more videos I, I just bought a new camera a new wide angle lens um, I want to put more content out so if you appreciate professionals giving their trade secrets for free please hit the like button and also the subscribe button I would really appreciate it Morel's Light Fast Stain is a spirit based stain. It's, it's very thin, very easy to splash and make a mess. You have to be very careful with it. It's also a, a little temperamental to put down. It's easy to leave lap lines uh, if you're slow with it. Lap lines means, let's say you do one line or row, as you can see us doing here, uh, like two or three or, well, three or four boards at a time here. Um, and once you complete that, you, you do the next few boards and as you overlap, overlap it slightly, it creates a dark line going across the floor. So this new medium oak colour seemed to be a little more forgiving though. I have heard some good things about some new stains in the UK, but I'm yet to try them. So for the time being, and especially on pine boards, I'm using Morel's Light Fast Stain. So yeah, staining wood floors with a roller. This video is definitely going to attract a hailstorm of professionals telling me that I'm doing it wrong. Ha ha ha! Yeah, I mean, it's great to be honest. Um, and if you're watching this and think I'm doing it wrong, please do comment. Tell me why it's wrong to use a roller. Tell me what you do instead. I do get a lot of comments from other professionals and uh, opinions vary greatly. And it's good for not just my, my readers to read and find out what the differences are, but... Um, you know I find it interesting too so definitely leave a comment I do know a few guys in the UK that occasionally use this technique but more commonly known to be it's more commonly known to be a bad way of doing it as the uh, the roller applies too much stain um, as you may or may not know generally the idea with stain is that you apply it quite heavily and then you wipe the excess off so it's kind of like wax on wax off as it were Usually you use a, a rag to dip in the stain and apply it thickly and then you use a dry rag to wipe off the excess. Using a roller like this is good for bigger areas when you really need to get it done a bit quicker. It definitely needs to be a thin pile roller uh, and you need to keep moving. You might notice that if you roll the roller one way it squeezes out a puddle of stain but it doesn't if you roll it in the other direction for some reason. You can't let these puddles sit for too long. They need to be spread out. If you do accidentally drip or, or leave lines, you can leave a thick layer of stain on that surface for about 10 seconds. And it will tend to kind of solve uh, and, and move the stain so that you can kind of work it out a bit. Um, 
You may also notice that when I roll quickly, it leaves more stain on the surface than um, when I am rolling slowly. So just the weird physics of these short pile rollers. By the way, I also have a link for a short pile roller for doing the stain, again, both in the US and in the UK, in the description. You can see what's going on here, but I'm gonna spell it out nonetheless. My buddy is, uh, my buddy here is applying the stain to the edges, just on a few boards that we're going to do. Then I dip the roller in the stain, um, but then I also roll the roller down the side of the bucket to strain off the stain a little, so I don't have too much going down on the floor. I start rolling it out, try to touch the edges that um, my guy has brushed in as quick as possible before it starts drying. As I said, it's a, a spirit-based stain, so this stuff is evaporating very quickly. So I touch the brushed edge, and then I just keep spreading it out, trying not to leave a puddle, trying to move that line as often as possible, keeping a wet edge. Um, you want to pick a few boards, brush the edges, and fill in the middle as fast as possible, and then get onto the next line. You don't want to do too like wide of a line, so like it's really difficult to reach uh, and wipe the excess off. Just keep it in within within, within an arm's reach. Uh, and if the floor's really big, maybe even do it in thinner strips. So two or just two or three boards at a time. That way you can get each row done quicker and you're less likely to have overlap lines. Make sure you are wearing latex gloves and a respirator. Um, this Morel stuff especially is very strong smelling, so make sure you're wearing a respirator. Also, you can see we are wearing uh, overshoes. This is quite important. I will show you why in just a sec. Um, with, with the gloves, with the gloves, a handy little, little trick is to have two or three over your right hand so as they get covered and or worn out you can just peel them off and you've got a fresh one underneath. You might notice that we haven't put any tape on the skirting or baseboards. Um, with some stains and especially this stain it tends to actually wick up the back of the tape and leave more and thicker stain marks on the skirting than if you just don't put any tape on the, the baseboards or skirting at all. So we just carefully brush up to the edges um, and then try to get as close as possible with the rag without wiping, wiping the, the rag on the skirt. Uh, the one great thing about Morel's Lightfast Stain is that they have a thinner which is superb. One time I accidentally splashed this stuff on a brand new carpet on a staircase. I was preparing to pay for new carpets but I put some thinners on a rag and I and just rubbed it on the on the, the stain and it completely removed it from this carpet, which is pretty crazy. You would have thought it would it would not get it all out, but it did. Um, and it wipes off other surfaces really easy, you know, if you get it on tiles or whatever. You may have heard of water popping. That's a process of spraying the whole floor down with water in order to cause the grain to swell and rise. This can help to hide fine scratches from the sanding, but also make the surface more uniform for the stain. The reason we didn't water pop this floor is that it also causes the floor to absorb much more stain and thus be slightly darker, and we were trying to keep this as light as possible. It's a shame about this little darker patch here um, if you rewind the video back to the beginning, you'll notice that uh, this existed before we applied the stain. This can happen with floors that are 50 to 100 years old, or obviously even older. Just thought I'd point it out, um, you know, some kind of bruising. It's just the way it is. Also, I wanted to point out that there are 
darker marks at the edge of the board here while it's lighter in the middle of the board. That's because you have the heartwood in the center of the tree which is more dense and then you have the sapwood at the edge of the board or at the edge of the tree which is less dense. If wood is less dense it's more porous and it will absorb much more stain so with especially with darker stains it can actually go black and I got a lot of stick for this in my other staining video but uh, yeah, it is what it is. What do you want from me? Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, it's good to wear overshoes. Um, and as you are about to see with this stain, it's possible to walk on the stain while it's wet and not leave any footprints. I say this stain in particular because it may not be the case for the particular stain that you're using. Um, but overshoes are always better than socks. Socks can absorb the stain from the floor and leave a lighter footprint. And the impermeable nature of the overshoes just holds the stain in the floor. And there you go. He's just stepping on the floor there, just standing on it wet. Um, I actually have a sneaky suspicion that you can walk on the floor, whether it's wet or dry or semi-dry with overshoes on and it doesn't actually cause a problem but I'm yet to test it I uh, just don't quite have the cojones so yeah as you can see young Adam standing on the wet stain waiting for me to get a little further uh, rolling down the stain so he can start drying it off with previous stains we actually used to rag on like an arm's length of stain on this like last stretch out of the door we do like an arm's length of applying and then we dry it off and then we do another arm's length um, of applying and dry it off again and it ended up leaving a very patchy line going out of the exit so doing it this way makes it much more consistent one other thing that I forgot to mention is that we did that cupboard at the back there first um, for one reason and that's that you you want to plan your exit so if I started staining from the side of the room where the camera is and then I got to the other side and started doing the cupboard before leaving out of the bedroom door it would have left a line that is slightly too long that could have caused a, a dry line or an overlap line so instead we do that cupboard and carefully brush to the edge of a board and um, just underneath the door and um, that way we can brush up to it uh, on that same line once we get across the floor and uh, we aren't waiting ages to do the cupboard before exiting so this is uh, a vital thing to to prevent having any application marks on the floor all right well that's basically the staining done now uh, so we're about to start lacquering the floor and what are we going to be using? It's Bonatraffic HD in a matte finish. And again, I have Amazon affiliate links for Bonatraffic, the Bonatraffic HD, direct from Bonner in both the UK and the USA. I really love this product. I used to use another lacquer that was more popular among professionals and it was cheaper. I just kept having issues with it. <clears throat> Whole batches of it would have problems sometimes. Always in the winter for some reason, just unending problems. So I finally switched to the more expensive Bonner and I haven't had any issues since. It's such a great lacquer. Not only is the final product uh, hard wearing and smooth, it looks great, but also in the fact that it's very easy to apply. Ease of use is one of the most important things with lacquers and uh, especially for DIYers it needs to be easy to apply um, Bonner Traffic HD does it all uh, unfortunately you just got to pay for it it is more expensive than other lacquers as you can see here it's a similar situation to the staining just without ragging off so you're brushing the ends of the uh, you're, you're brushing the ends of a few boards then rolling the finish into the field between those, e those edges, um, doing it in rows again, 
um, doing the, the cupboard first so that we don't end up having to do that before we then do the final line out of the door. And you can see I'm using a green roller that is called the Hamilton Perfect Finish Roller. Uh, and again, I have an Amazon link in the description for this exact roller. Unfortunately, it's only for people in the UK. I think you might be able to get this roller in the US. But um, I have a link for the Purdy Ultra Finish Roller for the guys in the US, uh, which is perfect for the job. I have used it before. It's just slightly more expensive, medium pile, lossless, just what you want. Right now you can see me cross rolling the boards. The theory is you roll it one way and then you roll it the other way and this just helps you, uh, helps to ensure that you've covered the floor properly and to make the lacquer consistent in thickness. That way you don't get patches on the floor taking ages to dry after you've finished. Um, on the first coat of lacquer I will cross roll whereas on the final coat I tend to just double roll with the grain. Um, whilst bonnet traffic levels out very well and I've never had a problem with cross roller marks being in the top coat, coat of lacquer, I'm still a bit dubious and superstitious. I just want to roll with the boards to try and get that perfect smooth finish. Sometimes I have to cross roll but you know it, it's not the end of the world. As you can see, I am working out of a bucket and this, it really is a much better way to lacquer. Most of the time, uh, pouring the lacquer straight on the floor is fine, but with certain primers on certain woods, the puddles that form when you pour straight onto the floor can mark the floor, uh, which can only be fixed with resanding. Sometimes you can with some primers you can just rub out a patch and, and then touch it in. It's not really something you want to be dealing with after you've done that first coat. So ideally you get it right the first time. Staining, uh, pouring lac onto a stain floor is dangerous because if it does leave a mark then you have to resand the floor. There's no two ways about it. So working out of a bucket is also much better for DIYers. Knowing how much lacquer to pour out is something that can only be learned with experience. And as a DIYer, you can accidentally pour too much lacquer um, onto the surface and then you have a problem of trying to spread it out evenly and you end up with these puddles. Um, especially if you do it just by your, the front door of your house and you end up with this massive lake of, uh, of lacquer that you're trying to deal with. So. Lacquer should generally be applied, applied at a rate of one liter per 10 square meters or one quart per 100 square feet. Um, but that can vary based on uh, what type of floor you're lacquering, what type of wood it is, whether or not it's stained, uh, what lacquer you're using. But as a rule of thumb, one dip in the lacquer with a medium pole roller should cuff, cover roughly one to 1.5 square meters or 11 to 16 square feet. Uh, this amount might feel a lot thicker on the final coat as the floor will be well sealed by, by that point and it won't absorb too much. So it will feel really thick, but just try not to spread it out more and try to keep it at that coverage and you'll end up with a nice thick hard wearing surface. So, right. <clears throat> Oopie doo. What else? Oh yeah, you don't need to use a primer after the stain. At least most of the time. Stains tend to act as a primer. So you can go straight over the top with the top coats rather than priming it first. If you use anything that's described as a wood dye, then you need to prime it before going over it with the top coats. If you don't prime it, the dye continues to sort of sink into the wood over the next year or so, causing it to fade and look pretty bad. How and why this happens, I have no idea. I'm not a scientist. Just a humble floor sander and mediocre YouTuber. Talking about being a media, mediocre YouTuber, 
Um, I'd really appreciate if you click like and subscribe. It really helps. Hopefully you've seen enough value in this video to just go ahead and do that. Even though you haven't seen the final product yet, which who knows, it could be terrible. You could have watched this all this time and then we'll get to the final pictures and be like, oh my God, it's disgusting. So click like and subscribe. Talking for 23 minutes is tough. Ah uh, yeah, this floor was filled. Nowadays I recommend against filling. Pretty much everything that isn't parquet I recommend against filling. If you're going to fill it should be less than four inches wide boards and ideally it should be uh, fitted on a solid subfloor, not floorboards nailed into joists like this. There's too much flexibility in the boards not to mention the expansion and contraction throughout the year, which will make the filler fall out. So why did I fill this floor, I hear you cry? Well, it was previously filled and some of that fill filler had fallen out. And I always explain to the customers that I don't recommend filling the floors and I don't guarantee it for any length of time. But if they still want me to do it, then I, I do it. And it kind of does make sense if, if it's already been filled. So, come on then, finish the floor. Crikey, O'Reilly. Do you know what? I I, re I recorded this video twice. I actually recorded the, this this exact same video in in the back bedroom and cleverly I didn't have enough battery and it just ran out halfway through um, and I'm kind of glad I had an opportunity to re-record this video because whenever I've got the camera on I just get so nervous like I, I don't I'm, I make stupid mistakes and so does um, my helper here like we it's so bizarre that we just <laughs> we're doing this stuff every day and then you click record and all of a sudden our brains just sort of disappear so so here we go here's the time lapse uh, just drying off darkening up it still has another coat to go but I didn't get that on video so here we are with the final finished images and there's the staircase that we also did for them I think it looks great I hope you do too and how did the floor look there it is. Uh, I really liked it. I was happy with it. The customer was happy with it. I think I'm definitely going to put these uh, these pictures on my Instagram. Um, what do you guys think? Is it too light, too dark, too orangey? Does it look good or do you not like the effect? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below and check out my other videos.